Hello investors and welcome back to Just Randy Stocks. During this video, I wanted to tell you about Q Health or ticker symbol HLTH, which is set to launch later this week, Friday, September 24th, between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. between the listing price of $15 to $17. And this probably popped up on your mobile app or on your Robinhood account. You may have gotten a notification yesterday that if you were interested in this play, that you could potentially take advantage of it. So the shares that will be offered is going to be about 12.5 million and the underwriters will have the option to purchase another 1.8 million shares. And this is important to know just because if the IPO listing price doesn't go all that well, sometimes you'll see the underwriters purchase the stock to help emphasize the stock price. So if it does do an initial dip, then you may see it spike up a little bit temporarily on the initial offering day. Now, I believe Robinhood did set some rules that if you purchase, you have to hold the stock for 90 days before you can sell, or they will not allow you to take advantage of offerings in the future. So a potential play that you could take advantage of here is not sign up for the initial IPO listing price. Like you, you don't care about that. Wait for the dip if there is one. I expect there potentially could be a chance of a dip in this one. Follow the underwriters and ride the the momentum up once this dips. Uh, because ultimately, I'll give you the bottom line up front. And we'll walk through the stock in a little bit more detail. But they only have the COVID over-the-counter test available. They plan on doing more, but not till the middle of next year or 2022. And, uh, you know, they, this company's been around with this prototype since, I believe, 2014. But we're going to take a closer look at it in this video. But I'll just to let you know now, I'm not going to waste anybody's time. Uh, feel free to watch the rest of the video if you'd like. I, you know, it's, it always helps out to have the watch hours. But I don't want to waste anybody's time. And those are my thoughts up front. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at the company. Me too. Results in under 20 minutes. Connected from a mobile phone to the cloud. Accurate. Highly sensitive. And specific. So this first article is from May 17th of 2014. Q is a connected lab in a box for on-demand health testing at home. And if you scroll down, you can see from 2014, not much, nothing has changed from what they're advertising now. And if you continue to scroll, you could see that there are five initial cartridges for Q. Flu, fertility, testosterone, we're tracking because of it, it has a role in muscle production, vitamin D, and inflammation. And here it says, so they don't want to tip their cards on exactly what else is in their roadmap at this early point. So this was back in 2014. Sounds a little strange that you just can't be straight up until, you know, people what you're working on. And not much has changed from what they have listed now in their S1. Matter of fact, I don't even think it has listed this testosterone. They have flu, fertility, and we'll just, we'll take a look. So uh, another thing I wanted to do, and this might be jumping around just a little bit. First off, if the only thing that they have in their queue right now ready for over-the-counter for revenue generation is COVID test, you should be able to do a really basic... Google search to, to, for COVID test, and this should, you would hope it could pop up. And so, so August 24, 2021, you could see that I, I put in best over-the-counter COVID test, and you'll see their competitors listed here, but they are not listed in the examples provided that are here in this article. So, I mean, I'm sure I could have looked around for articles. You can see it's got 
Empower DX uh, at a hundred dollars. It's got DX another. It's got Everly Well COVID. It's got uh, Pixel. It's got one by Amazon, which is really cheap. <laughs> and uh, yeah, there's another one, but it's and and another one. And th I, I think I pulled up three of these that were on the demand. You know, this was mail ordered results. Alum was an at home test. One, not two. Uh, so it, there's definitely some competition for COVID out there. So it's not like they probably have a whole slew of market share. So, of course, there was this other article about the seven things. And the most important thing here would be the important financials that's highlighted in this picture. So mainly what this says is it goes through a percentage of how much revenue was collected in the last six months ending in June 30th. And that would have been $201 million. And what I like about this article is of that amount, $161 million, or approximately 83%, was product revenue from the public sector entities. So this is a good good sign, but I mean, really, are how much longer will we see COVID tests really be ramping up like they are now? I would expect that number to go down with vaccinations and more more effective you know, uh, renewals of vaccinations. So with the remaining, this was this DOD contract. They, they, they got, they were awarded a contract of, and there was a 34.8 million uh, of revenue generation there. But out of that 34.8 million, one single enterprise customer accounted for 28.9. So 83% is a lot of revenue. But you can assume that this USDOD portion was only a slice that may not be reoccurring. So hopefully what you're looking for is that this 83% in the future is going to grow, not only to be more than 83% in the future, but to, to offset this DOD contract that they may not get again because there will be less emphasis on COVID moving into the future. Uh, or just my initial thoughts. So respectfully moving into the future financials, I don't know how strong this company will perform until they start applying and actually make through the process, the FDA approval process on some of these filings for the other things that they're trying to do. So let's take a look at the S1 real quick. We're seeking to usher in a new era of healthcare, healthcare 2.0, to transform how acute and chronic conditions are diagnosed and managed. So basically just being able to do this at home on a device, get the test results immediately. So they're trying to transform the space. And then here, so the while the COVID-19 test is our only commercially available test kit, uh, we have five additional test kits in late stage clinical development Influenza A, B, flu, respiratory, virus, RSV, fertility, pregnancy, and inflammation. So, you know, it's it's got the timing, the second half of 2022. And what, what I'll tell you is <laughs> if you haven't been able to do it in the process from 2014 till now, maybe you're going public to get some of this momentum, I would really be asking myself, do I trust this date? And is this more of the timing that I would be looking at this company? And does this give me a lot of time to do a little bit more due diligence and research just because they're going public doesn't necessarily mean that this is going to be a good price for this one. So here's the article in October 14th of 2020 where they they received and, you know, <laughs> the government was throwing money at everything related to the coronavirus. So I'm not surprised, and I don't think that this was a difficult deal for them to capture. I think anybody who pretty much applied was getting you know, money. So those are my initial thoughts. Uh, I'm going to close it out with one more video. Feel free to watch it. or you know, But this is ultimately going to be a hold. Wait for the dip if you really want to get into it and uh, ride that momentum pressure up. But I would not buy this pre-IPO, and I could be completely wrong. 
those are my thoughts. This is just Randy. I'll see you guys in the next video. COVID is surging throughout the country, so we had to put together a program to help protect our workforce. And we're now over 400 people. We have a testing program set up at multiple facilities. And so what we needed to do was be able to aggregate all those test results into one place. Q built a web-based app, which we call a dashboard. Testing occurs twice a week. Each employee scans their barcode at the start of a test. And this unique member ID links the test result to the employee profile on the dashboard. After providing the swab, the employee waits outside or in their car until they get their test result. So after I test, I always think about, was there any surfaces that I touched? Was I next to anybody, maybe too closely? So we've caught more than a dozen folks so far since we implemented the testing program, all of which who could have come into our building and potentially caused a serious outbreak. After about 20 minutes, the test results will automatically populate on the device that ran the test and at the same time onto the dashboard. They will all receive either a text message or an email letting them know that they are safe to enter the building. Once I get my negative results, it just gives me a sense of relief knowing that I'm not sick so I can go about my day and do my work. They know that they're not being exposed to coworkers who are positive, they're well protected, and that they can help us fight. That's what we're working on to be able to give everyone the relief of knowing so we can focus on work that's important.